Hi guys, hope everybody's having a great day. So, I wanted to go over this mallet I made a little bit. As most of you know, I absolutely love making mallets. Just something about them and something about the process to me is just so pleasurable and so much fun. So, I was contacted by a customer a little while back that wanted one that was going to be a gift for a friend. So, I cannot reveal who it's for. But this person wanted it a darker wood with a beautiful green epoxy mix and a river pattern on the side of the mallet. So the first things I did after stabilizing a couple of large chunks of walnut was to actually cut them down to dimension. Now all I had was my other old bandsaw I should say and it was a little rough as far as the cut so I decided to plane everything down before casting it and turning it on the lathe. Now I will say this, I made the mold a little bit bigger than what I necessarily needed, but I'm glad I did. There was some tear out in the stabilized walnut, so I actually had to turn past it, but the handle turned out absolutely amazing. It was a beautiful dark color with this crazy green pattern on it, and I couldn't have been more happy with how the handle turned out after all the sanding and polishing on the lathe. This was one of those projects that was definitely going to teach me something as well as just make me proud in how it turns out. The head of this mallet was going to have a river pour design on the side connecting the two epoxy ends and I decided to use my Dremel tool with just a drum bit and this worked perfectly. It was very easy to control as well as when it got to a certain depth it was a perfectly uniform width all the way across and made for a super clean sanding operation and a really beautiful river uh, trough I guess you could call it on the side of the mallet. For this project, there was no need to make a big crazy mold, just some tall masking tape to mask off the ends and around the sides to stop the epoxy from leaking out would work perfectly. So I mixed up some of this beautiful custom green, and then I went back and added a bunch more light colored pearls to the same mix, and then added that through the center to give it a really pretty pearl wispy pattern through the sides of the river pour. After that, it was just time to start finishing out and getting everything sanded up and ready for the main pour. I decided to make the entire mold for this mallet out of Lexan so you guys could see the pour. Now looking back on that, that was a little bit of a mistake as I had a couple of leaks come up and had to redo the mold. But it is what it is and I got it all fixed up and ready to go. Something you guys will notice is that this time I used a wooden spoon to mix the epoxy. Now this is a little bit more epoxy than what I use on some other projects, but the spoon actually helps keep air bubbles down as far as when you're mixing and not incorporating so much air into the mix. Now it was time for my favorite part of this, which was the pour. And this green color I really loved. It doesn't really look like it while it's being poured, but it has a lot of contrasting colors in it. And after it sets, those contrasting colors really pop and show up. After letting the head of the mallet sit and actually cure in the pressure tank for a while, it was time to get to shaping the head. Now a lot of people use a chop saw or a table saw. I decided this time to use a bandsaw that I had just gotten and it absolutely worked fine. I had no problems with it. Uh, the only issue I'd run into was as you can see I had to kind of knock down a little bit of the excess epoxy around the handle but that is a normal process when making these mallets so it was absolutely no problem for me. After I got the head of the mallet kind of shaped up, I did the rough sanding from 60 grit to about 220 grit, and then it was time to chamfer the edges of the mallet. And just to be honest, this is one of my favorite parts. I love doing hand chamfers with a small block plane. 
and on this particular mallet I made really wide chamfers on a couple of the edges or especially around the faces and it wound up coming out just beautifully just the way the chamfers accented the wood and accented the epoxy it just made everything stand out a little more after the chamfers had been cut it was time to do finish sanding now i started back again with about 180 grit just to knock off the rough edges of the chamfers and worked my way up all the way to 12,000 grit micro mesh now this gives the epoxy a beautiful glass like shine and makes everything super smooth now one thing i will say is doing these you have to be really careful not to actually damage the handle as the handle is finished when it is cast into the head of the mallet the buffing process for a mallet like this is the exact same as most things you'll do especially with a three wheel system on your lathe i started off with a, a little bit lower grit buffing compound on the first wheel working my way to a finishing compound on the final wheel and man did it give this thing a super high shine and the walnut and green especially with a little bit darker stain on the walnut it just pops man it just looked so great and i was super happy with how it came out thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed it and this was helpful if you decide you want to make a project like this also make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see all the new projects i'm working on and make sure to go give me a like over on my facebook and also on instagram at jpain woodworking I really appreciate it, guys. I hope to see you in the next video, and I had a lot of fun. See you later.